Okay, welcome back. Thank you. Um, welcome to uh, module four of our intermediate Dranview training. And we're going to talk about the report writer navigation. Um, the report writer is one of the most powerful capabilities of Dranview. Uh, I can say that given the information that we've covered on the screen um, with the chart options, the annotations, adding images, different things like that, um, you could just take a screen snapshot or print out any one page here, or any one pane, I should say, and that may be the extent of the reporting that you need to do for your application. So you can range from simply doing that using the Microsoft snipping tool. However, um, Drainview has a very powerful a formal report writer built into it. And you can easily start the report writer. First of all, you have to open the file um, that contains the data that you wanna report on. Um, then you click the report writer start option here in the ribbon pane. So I've selected that and I'll just move this up just a little bit. Um, there are two options in the report writer. There's the automatic and the custom. So the opening page is the same for them. However, it's your choice whether it's automatic or custom. And the difference is simply automatic. We as the, the uh, supplier of the software choose the content of what's in the report. So it's our canned report based upon a lot of years of experience, what the typical person may want. But you know that may not fit your needs. And matter of fact, most of the time it doesn't because people want to take advantage of the customized capabilities of the report writer. So for a simple report, and I'm going to just do this first, I'm going to select the automatic, which it will default to. You saw custom before because that was the last option that I chose within Trendview. Then you choose the time range that you want. You can choose the current Zoom level. So if I've just gone through an analysis um, a task within Dranview and I've zoomed into a particular time level, probably on the timeline over here, I can select that here and only report on the area that I have zoomed into. Otherwise, it's gonna default to the entire time of your survey. Now, this is, again is a uh, demonstration file that we have um, showing our SAG directivity capabilities. So it's very short. Uh, so these are typically over hours and days and weeks and months and sometimes longer that you're reporting on. And that'll reflect in the start date and time and the end date and time. So you can use the zoom level or you can tell it and force the, uh, the time that you want to start and end with here as well. You could do things like include whatever sites. We only have one site open. You can, you can start on different pages, different. You can, uh, maybe you only have a monochrome printer. Maybe it's a little old school here, but I can allow colored text or I can not allow colored text, which would optimize for monochrome. And you can include channel D or not. So you can force that. I know I had that question from a customer uh, this morning about channel D that we're looking into. So you can include or exclude channel D. And for reporting purposes here, you, you can tell us the nominal voltage. It did pick it from the file here, but maybe the nominal voltage and the nominal frequency uh, was not correct that it found and you wanna force something in there, maybe because it's different or for some reason, Drandu didn't pick the right value. Now you can create report writing templates. You can save whatever you've set up here or you can open one that's been done before. Okay, so you have that ability. And when you select open, you just go to the regular um, uh, um, uh, Windows Explorer, um, um, you know, file open kind of dialogue. I'm looking for the right term here. I apologize. So uh, what? The pick box. Well, that's one of them. Yes, yes. Thanks, Ken. So anyway, uh, on automatic, it's going to be a little different. You click OK. Now here are the default elements that are in an automatic report. Most of them apply to most of our customers, but maybe EN5160 only applies in Europe and won't apply to other parts of the world. Um, but you, you have the option of what's included here. Actually, you have no option of what's included. I select next. Dranview is gonna compute that report, produce it, and open up another tab with the details of that report. So. In that report, if you uh, if you didn't notice, there's a series of timelines and different types of elements in that report. So as I scroll down, and I'll do this slowly, okay, you have the different categories in the report, worst case summary, uh, waveforms, different things that default in their harmonic plots, different items that, that default in here. And again, this is a very small database. It doesn't include a lot of data. So some of these things may be blank in here. Uh, I chose this database again, because it's very simple and it's not cluttered and it's easy to understand. Now that I have this open, this is a text editor. So I can add anything that I like. I can configure it, I can move it, I can add, I can delete. And more importantly, I can go file, 
and I can go save as. So now I can save this anywhere on my computer or anything, anywhere my computer can network to, uh, most powerfully in an RTF format or a Microsoft Word format. And once it's off into those formats, well, you can easily edit them offline. So once you've produced a report, you can edit it online here with the built-in RTF editor, or you can save it off, as I said, and edit it within Word, um, the, some of the Google Doc capabilities and other things. So you have the ability to customize that report after it's been completed. So I'm gonna close this off and let's start again. And I click Start. Now we're gonna go through the custom report. This is really where the power of the DranView report writing capabilities comes in. So I select custom and all these options here are the same as they were before, <clears throat> excuse me. So what I described for automatic definitely applies. The difference is what happens when I click okay. So when I click okay, now I'm presented with a whole bunch of options, starting with what time plots that I wanna include, what power quality information that I wanna include, okay? And I can uh, have energy and demand. That's probably mislabeled. We should change that. But this is energy information and other information. We're going to go through these really briefly. But just as a little point, if you, if you really don't understand what the title means when I mentioned the, the balloon and hover help before, just leave your mouse on top of it. And it'll show you a preview of that type of plot. So you see these are very similar. But that was a voltage above. That's current. This is a THD. Um, so maybe I don't understand what a quality supply histogram looks like. So you can see. So what this is when I want, and th these are of interest to my survey, I just simply check the box that's important to me or uncheck it. So you have the ability to check and uncheck anything that you'd like to include or more include, importantly, exclude. Now, one thing to preface this by is that this is going to show you information that's in the database. If like as an example, uh, a powerful one here in the United States and North America, parts of the rest of the world, is IEEE 519 harmonic statistics. This supports the latest version, 519 2014. So if the data does not contain that information in the database, in this case, if it's not from our HDPQ line, if it's from some of our legacy products, you will not have that option in this report. So uh, the, the important moral here is that you may or may not see some of these options that are based upon the data in your database, which can be from the settings that you have for your instrument, uh, but more importantly, the instrument type may not have the data in the database that can produce this type of reporting information. So in uh, the, the powerful ones, we'll just highlight some. In the power quality, you, of course, have the harmonic report that we spoke about. Uh, if I go to our friends in Europe, it's EN5160 is extremely important. Uh, we have custom reports for China and Korea that we've developed over the years, the GBT reports um, for China. And about three years ago, we added some Korean reports to some of the Korean standards. Um, you have the magnitude duration report that you can include. We showed that in the chart options before. Uh, you can do demand and energy reports. You can have other types of reports here. You can include to list your events within your report. So some of the more advanced ones are load profiles, the probability density, cumulative probability, things like we spoke about before. Um, and in the UK, the G54 reporting, which is our harmonic and a uh, nonlinear load uh, compliance report. And uh, for those folks who are tuning in from the UK, we are working on a G55 solution. G55 is the newest version of the uh, the UK standard. So that's in progress. We It's in beta version right now, quite honestly, for Dranview. And uh, we are testing that with our UK partner, IMH, right now, and some of our key accounts. So uh, if that's important to you, um, just reach out to us. We're happy to talk about it. Now, some of the standards, you can create your own standards if you have your own compliance standards, uh, but we also include some common standards for NVE, some of the IEC compliance standards, and you can say create new standard. And I'm going to uncheck that now because uh, we'll come back to that. And that way, if you have your own standard in, for your own company, your, uh, your country, you can add compliance standards. So as an example, maybe you have a voltage regulation standard and you'd like to know when the voltage exceeds a particular voltage level. So in the United States, maybe 
125 volts is important to me. I want to know when it exceeds 125 volts. You can include that as a high limit or at a low limit. Do it for current, for harmonics, for THD, for watts, anything, any parameter that's measurable uh, in your database and available in Dranview, you could do a compliance setting for that. So uh, I'm going to just click next. And now that one of the differences between the automatic and the, the custom report, it's got the same list, but these are the things that we included and we took out some items. I can reorder how they appear. So maybe frequency is important to me. I can just click move up. Now frequency is the top one. Uh, maybe voltage is the least important to me. So I move it down to the end. Okay, so you have the ability, uh, no matter how many items are here, to customize the order in which they will appear in the report. So I click finish. And just like the automatic, now it's going to create the report based upon the settings that you have and based upon the, uh, um, the information in your database. So again, I don't have much information in this database, so some of these things are blank, but you can see here's my instrumentation configurations, which is very powerful, especially if you're going to send us information. This helps greatly in helping us help you with some instrument problems. And basically, as you scroll down is all the information that we selected um, as part of the configuration of the custom report. And again, you have the ability to add anything to this report, any text, everything can be saved. I go file, save as, and now I can save it to my RP RTF or probably more powerfully a doc format. So the last section, I'm gonna close this out. And again, they open up as different tabs in your, in your uh, um, DrainView browser. So let's start one more report. I'm going to leave it at custom. I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to go through the custom standards. So all the way at the bottom under standards, you see create new standard. So the difference now that I added that when I click next, uh, actually one more time, it's going to ask me what parameters I want to include in there and what are the limits that I want to report on. So uh, you can see I have a couple already set up as a test, and I'm going to set this as test over here, and I'll call it test one. So you can select the name of it. You can save this off as your custom report capability. So the point is you can you can add parameters, you can add limits for the parameters, and DranView will tell you whether you pass or fail these limits. So as an example, I've selected voltage RMS the instantaneous values at a high limit of 132 and a low limit of 108. This happens to be the IEEE uh, 1159 recommended practices. So this will tell me in my report every time that I have, that I've passed or I failed based upon these limits that I've added. So if I finish my report here, do I wanna save it first? And what this means, do I wanna save it off to a separate file? So the next time I come in, I can load that in as a template, maybe for another site that I have. So I'm gonna say no to that. DranView is gonna go do its thing. Just give it a couple seconds to finish. Okay, now I'm gonna scroll down and towards the bottom, you can see I failed that compliance test one that I just added here. All right, I failed it because this is a SAG directivity test. So you can see here in the event list, I intentionally created SAGs, or I should say we intentionally created SAGs here as part of this demonstration. But you can see this is a custom element of the report, which has failed in this particular example. So just like anything, I can annotate, I can add any text that I like and go file and save as, and I can save this report in an RTF or a doc format to go edit it later. Um, you can put your own letterhead on it. You can do anything you like uh, within these DranView reports.